What's up, guys? It's John, and I want you to take a moment before this podcast started to introduce it a little bit. I reached out to Taylor a couple of times to see if she would get on the podcast, and I know she was kind of nervous to do so, but she did such a good job on this. So, before this podcast starts, not in the live chat, but in the actual comments, post down here, hashtag thank you, Taylor. That's a big thing that I really want her to know how much that I and you all appreciate her for making the introduction to the BTS 7. While you're watching this podcast, Guess, please pull up her introduction and give her some views give her some likes give her some supportive comments because she definitely deserves it i'll be posting a link to not only her channel but also the video that she made in the description below i hope you all enjoy this conversation taylor is such a kind genuine person and she is a genuine army take care and enjoy <laughs> How's it going? Uh, thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Taylor. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, as soon as I did my first BTS reaction, I think that I had a suggestion for like watching your intro video before it was even published by the way so i am so grateful for you even being here right now i feel like you've been a part of my journey since i've been in the bts rabbit hole and and, I, and this is the first time getting to meet you so thank you thank you for being here well i have all the armies that suggested it today because <laughs> i didn't do anything but put the video out there <laughs> all the all these people like my subscribers are like oh i just told this reactor about you and i'm like oh thank you <laughs> yeah it's wild. I had the suggestions before. I think it was just even like a private video or something like that at the time. Like it was unlisted still. And um, I think you were like getting it up to date and stuff. How did you decide to kind of get this video together? What sparked the idea? Um, so I've turned about maybe like four or five people around me into armies already. Mm -hmm. And it was like a struggle to find this one video that perfectly combined, like not perfectly, but somewhat combined their personality and their music ability and talent together in one mm -hmm. video. And of course there are ones out there, but like I wanted to sometimes include my favorite moments in the yeah. video and like show it to my friends and family too. So I was like, well then I should just make my own. And it became, it was like the perfect timing because at my workplace, which is Oregon Entertainment, I had begun talking about BTS like so much um, to my boss that one day he was just like well like show me something yeah so he watched mma idol and then i was like this is the perfect moment where i should make that video <laughs> and this can be like a video where i can show it to them and they can learn mm -hmm. and i can also get the feedback from army yeah so it was my boss and my coworker that i technically made it for <laughs> and then i just put it up there afterwards for like if other armies wanted to use it as well. Mm -hmm. So you had like no expectations of it just like turning into kind of what it has turned into at this point, like. <laughs> no, really, like I, I could have just kept it in my computer. Like that's what I was planning to do, honestly. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, this is, this is really good. Like you should make the final. And so I was like, okay, this is a draft. I'm going to get the feedback. I'm going to make the final yeah. and put it out there for whoever wants to use. And I thought maybe like a few hundred people would use it. Yeah. Now it has like I don't even know what it has right now but that's crazy yeah you're close to like a million views on there which I feel like probably like with all the reactions to your video and your video combined it's well over a million I think at this point for sure I don't know that's gotta be wild like knowing that many people saw the video that are like and are like that engaged in it there's like a whole thank you Taylor movement there's like a hashtag thank you Taylor thing going on so well you started that right I watched your reaction and you're like comment thank you Taylor and we watched something Dude, all you. whenever I came across your video the intro it really like kind of solidified like I really genuinely like these guys, not just their music, like their message that they have and like their personalities. They're cool. So I'd say like, that's really the moment where I really was like, maybe I am army. <laughs> so yeah. What got you into BTS personally? Well, I'm a map of the soul seven army. So that's like early 2020. Mm -hmm. um, it's still fairly new, but not new enough to be considered a baby army anymore. I think. Yeah. But the very, very first time I watched their performance was the 2017 AMAs, which is like mm -hmm. their first um, TV American performance. Mm -hmm. um, it had just been like on TV or whatever on Twitter stream. And then I knew, I just knew that they were good net dancers and I mm -hmm. really like watching 
dance performance, so I watched them. I like I I knew nothing about them, but at the end, I was like so so proud of them for some reason. <laughs> Um, I just felt so much pride because they're Asian, mm-hmm. and although I'm not Korean, I'm Asian. Mm-hmm. And like growing up watching like Disney or Nickelodeon, there aren't that many main characters that are like Asian. Yeah. And if there were characters that were Asian, it would be the stereotypical like nerd mm-hmm. or a character that was like made fun of or something. So it was just like so different to see how hard the audience was cheering for them, and they mm-hmm. were like. The first people I saw that were like super cool that were yeah. like around my age and were Asian. And at the time, I really wanted to be like my dream was to be a video editor in mm-hmm. the entertainment industry. And they like showed me that it's possible for Asians to be successful in the entertainment industry. And so like I could do it as well if I really want to. Yeah. Um. But at the time, like 2017, I had just graduated high school and was. Like I moved states to go to college, and so my life was really like too hectic to fall down the rabbit hole at that time. And then, I know you've heard this saying, but like BTS finds you when you need it the most. Yeah. Um, for me, that was true because many years um, before 2020, I had like lost my passion and stuff to create at all, really. And then 2019 and early 2020 was like the max point where I was like, really nothing makes me happy anymore. And like, I just, like, I thought I lost um, like everything that I wanted, like I dreamed of doing. But then I had the chance to study abroad in Europe. And that had been a dream since I was like a kid to study abroad in Europe. And so I went and I was traveling and stuff like with my friends, they came to, and I started to feel like better and like re-inspired. And then news spread of like this virus that was going around yeah and then within like a few weeks like the whole campus was abandoned like my whole city abroad team was flying home and it just felt like everything was crashing down and like i had nothing like i was just starting to feel better and then all of a sudden like gone that's horrible and so like on one of those nights where I'm like up at 3 a.m. in my dorm, just like looking through YouTube or whatever. Mm-hmm. I saw James Corden, I think, Black Swan. Yes. Um, and I had remembered them from the first time I watched them. And I was like, oh, like the scenery in this thumbnail looks really nice. Mm-hmm. And I just want to see them dance. And so I watched it. And I was like, that's the song where I knew like this group is different from yeah. all the pop groups I've seen before. Like I haven't seen many, but you know, like Black Swan, it just sounds different. Mm-hmm. The whole thing different the type of dancing is different i actually started watching them through reactors yeah so my interest was knowing like or like finding out what people around the world thought of like an asian group yeah because again like, i just wanted to feel like like i'm proud of being asian yeah and so i would like watch people react to like the who is bts and show and that's how i learned their names and like a little bit about them Mm -hmm. and then watch their like music videos and all that and then after that i started like falling down the rabbit hole watching my watching things on my own and then like listening to all their tracks and yeah Yeah. i guess that's how i mean that's That's a very long no like seriously thank you for sharing that with me who were some of the first reactors that you watched why were they actually i maybe Mm, I have watched uh, What You Gotta Say Mm -hmm. uh, from, I think, almost the very beginning of his journey, if I remember correctly. And then other people I can't remember. (laughs) Uh, I don't think they post anymore, maybe. Is it wild, though, to, like, think you started down this rabbit hole in watching reactors and then now reactors are, like, reacting to the videos that you've made? Is it like weird to think about that? <laughs> yeah, but I I know you saw my tweet. I don't necessarily like watching people react to my videos <laughs> because it just like makes me nervous. Like yeah. having anyone watch something I made makes me nervous. But my parents really love watching people react to my video, Aww. and so I just like watch with them. Yeah. Um, so that's that's reactions I watch, and also my followers like tell me this was a good reaction, like. Please watch it if you have time. Yeah. So that was yours for me. Someone sent Aww. it to me. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. And you know what? Like, I I feel like me and you are very similar in that aspect. Like, I think that, like, I'm my own worst critic. I can't watch my own reactions back because I'll cr- 
critique everything. I'll be like, oh, I hate my voice right here. Or like, you know, something, I'll find something wrong with what I've done. And just recently, somebody sent me a, um, a message, someone from Army. And in the last reaction that I did, I was talking about kind of how I've got like maybe imposter syndrome might be like a really good word for what I have. Maybe I'm not sure. Or like body is just more feel possibly. I was talking about that in the reaction and they were, uh, they said that Jimin and a lot of other members of BTS have that too, where they just, it's just wild to think that like, even at such a high level in BTS as well too, like they, they feel the same things that we do. And I think that it just goes to show that even though we might not see the great in ourselves, other people definitely can. So it gives me hope. I can relate to it though, for sure. That's one of the things I like about them too. Like they don't just show they're successful. They show the hard parts too. Yeah. And that makes me that's what makes me realize that like we as normal i mean they're normal too but mm -hmm. as just like common people um we can go through stuff too just like them and still be as yeah. successful as possibly so since making your intro how has your channel changed or how have you changed like has there been a drastic change in your life since i wouldn't say it's so drastic but um people follow me now <laughs> um <laughs> And so I used to use Twitter as just like a trash, like my trash thoughts. Yeah. Um, because I would tweet something and I would get like zero likes, zero retweets. You know, it was just mm. something where I could put out what I was feeling. Yeah. Um, but now when I do that, there's people that say, "Oh, I relate," or like same, or this is how I got through that. And so there's kind of like this more support. Like I feel like I'm not so alone because other mm. people. Um, say that they have gone through the same thing or are thinking the same thing so yeah I think there's more like support surrounding me um channel wise I felt a bit bad for like people that were subscribing to me because like as I said like the video was not meant to be was not meant to grow my channel mm -hmm. like I it wasn't something that I put out so that I could start like this whole influencer kind of thing <laughs> um but people I got like 5,000 subscribers from it now and I was yes. kind of like I felt bad for them because I was like <laughs> this is just one video I'm putting out like there's nothing after this yeah. I don't know why you're subscribing <laughs> to me um but if you look at the old videos on my channel um mm -hmm. there used to be more of them but I did try to like vlog at one point mm -hmm. or like put out more like content that I created mm -hmm. and I just, it just like wasn't going anywhere so I gave up on it a long time ago but now that like people are saying they want more videos of me or they want to learn more about me or like the fact that they even subscribe to me I'm like maybe I shouldn't let that go to waste like yeah. maybe I should put out some things that I create there so me and my friend my army friend um we usually play like BTS games off camera like one second song challenge or yeah. the BTS dictionary that we did put up um, so I'm like, well, things like that, maybe ARMY would enjoy watching, like even if I don't think it'd be that interesting to them, maybe they could just feel like they have like friends that are ARMYs. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, I should just record that and put it out there. And some people like had fun playing with us. So I want to try to do more like games with ARMYs. Um, and then also I asked like some of my followers, what, what kind of videos would you want to see from me? Because I didn't really have a plan for this. Um, they're like, oh, just like daily vlogs would be fun. Yeah. And to me, daily life is very boring. But <laughs> um, I want to try and like go out and do more things. I think it would encourage me to go out and like experience more things because yeah. I want to like, for the vlog. And also, we live in like I live in Hawaii, so mm -hmm. Bon Voyage Two. I don't think you've watched it yet, but yet. it was filmed filmed here so a lot of places they went um i can go as well and like show armies like what it's like now yeah um, and like things they drew or things they did there's still like memorabilia in the place oh, so cool so i can go and like show them what it's like i think yeah. that would be fun yeah i think it's so cool that i think for even both of us like for me it's musically like i kind of was going through the same kind of slump i guess creatively i just felt like just kind of stuck you know, or not motivated maybe at the same time. And then just since doing these reactions, since really kind of falling into the rabbit hole, I've kind of maybe accepted more about like not being so harsh on myself with my own music. So I have a lot to think for like my YouTube channel, but then like BTS and ARMY for pulling me kind of out of myself, kind of like pulling me out of my shell a little bit, I guess. And I mean, now like I'm, I'm playing saxophone, I'm like doing everything instead of just guitar now. So like... I don't know. I really, I like that. Not, I'm excited if you, especially like 
if you start doing more of the vlogging and start showing more of that side of yourself, I think that'd be very cool, very interesting. Is that already kind of what you do in your in your just day job? Is that like video editing? Is that the same type of work that you do? Uh, we I do video editing for work at Oregon Entertainment, but mm -hmm. it's what the YouTube channel is is not what we're doing all the time. <laughs> Like yeah. we have, uh, we do like commercials and like um, stuff for clients. Mm -hmm. So that's why the channel is kind of like on a break right now <laughs> because, you know, work for clients comes first. Mm -hmm. There's like deadlines and everything. Yeah. Um, so we do more like corporate things and also things for like nonprofits and um, that kind of editing. And the channel is kind of just, we want to focus on it more. But right now um, it's just what we do if we have time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But he definitely wants to focus on it more. This is actually a fan question, but I feel like this would be a really good time to put this in here. How did it feel converting your boss into army, and is he still army? I don't know if he would consider himself army yet. To be honest, <laughs> I don't know if he even knows all the members' names yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he did watch the intro, but he was like the very for or like the second person to ever watch it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was still the draft at that point. He has gone to PDT Vegas since then, and he loved that. But I don't know if he would consider himself army. I think he is, though. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't think he's heard enough songs, though, yet. Yeah. Um, he needs to dig into more content first, I feel. <laughs> right, yes. It must be really neat to, like, be getting people around you, like, in your real life to become ARMY. Like you said, maybe you've got, like, four or five people so far that you've kind of converted to ARMY. But, like, <laughs> I, I think that's one reason that everybody likes watching the reactions and everybody likes watching your intro video. Because, like, it kind of gives more of a community since, you know? Like, we don't really have that, I guess, in our IRL life. Like, my friends, all of my friends are, like, super into metal and stuff or, like, different music. And then if I'm talking to BTS about them, they're like, wait, what? I, like k-pop band oh my gosh or something you know what i mean so like it's cool to come here and have these videos and then like not really be judged and actually share like common interest in it i think that's very like healing for army as well because a lot of army don't have people around them who are open-minded mm -hmm. to things like that like k-pop bts they think like oh i'm not gonna like it so they mm -hmm. don't even try so for lots of armies like i think reactors are a good place for them to go where they can like express the things they like because i know you probably got these comments where they look like essays or like yeah. novels telling yeah. you all the information about the members i think it's just because they're like super excited that they finally found someone who's willing to like listen to them mm -hmm. and like really share with them the joy of like bts yeah because that's not really common in people yeah it's so yeah. weird that, yeah, it, it's crazy that they're like such a big band, but also so like, I don't know if it's maybe just over here in the West. I'm not really sure, but like, there's so many people that don't know about them or don't like, they're still kind of obscure, like a cult in a sense, because like, there's not like as many people that know about them, but they're huge. I don't know that there's many bands that are like that really, you know, like I'm trying to think of somebody else that's like that massive of a band, but also like that unknown by, I guess, just random people. Yeah. I always wondered, like when I first heard of BTS, I thought they were the only K-pop <laughs> or like I knew there were other K-pop groups but i didn't know that there were so many mm -hmm. as i wondered why bts out of all the groups were so known like here but now that i watched them like i i get it i know <laughs> but yeah. at the time i was like thinking that they're one of the only ones but there's a lot <laughs> right yeah they kind of got me into like accepting the idea that maybe uh k-pop's a genre that i would like to kind of start diving into more and since then listening to the bts and realizing that they're completely different than i thought they were i started listening to like checking out other k-pop bands and being like this is a completely different genre than i thought it was i really thought like i don't know, like backstreet boys or something like that just speaking another language but no it's like so different okay so we talked about kind of what got you into bts and checking them out but when would you say you actually became army is there like a point in your life where you're like all right this is definitely a army Maybe like a few days after of like going down the rabbit hole, like every night I would just keep going down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. But maybe like a few days after, I finally downloaded V Live and Weverse. Yeah. Um, and like at that point, it's not just like casual listening. Like I wanted to know <laughs> as soon as they post something, as soon as they go live. And during that pandemic time where it was like lockdown, they would go mm -hmm. live like almost every week. Oh, that's so cool. And that is that is something like I have never, ex I've been in fandoms my almost my entire life. Mm -hmm. And that 
connection that were that were like trying to get with the fans um to not feel so like alone in lockdown or like down was something that i've never seen before from an artist um mm. that close connection to his fans and so i was like okay yes like they care so much about army and they're willing to like spend time just like making braces or like wow. making coffee for like hours just sitting there talking to army and i was like, okay like they they really care about their fans they have good music they're good looking <laughs> um they've they've got everything so here yeah. i go <laughs> army <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean like honestly i've said this numerous times that i wish that i was army or at least wish that i was just interested in them or knew of them back during the pandemic exactly what you said i feel like they kind of gave so much hope or so much light in that time and okay so just being like a guy and like I guess like some traits of like that toxic masculinity type stuff I try to bottle up my emotions like I don't really like if I'm sad I'm not really gonna show it I guess in that sense so like life goes on is the only song I think in like recent history that I've ever actually just like made me cry watching the videos the making of and then like the music video and then the reaction that we did like I tried to hunt down a live show where they're playing it in front of a crowd and like just knowing like how much they put into that and then finally being able to see them like play that in front of a crowd was like such a cool moment for me. But I don't know. I think that would be really cool. Like, especially if I would have been a fan of theirs back then, they just seem like they kind of lightened up a really dark time in the whole world, you know? Yeah, I think even they were going through a hard time during mm -hmm. that time too, especially because their, their whole tour was canceled, which knowing them, they planned out way, way before and like mm. had practiced so hard for just got canceled in front of their eyes. Um, but they they kept that positive like vibe for me. Like they they kept going for us. So mm. and I really appreciate um, them for. Yeah. What is your whole take on this? Like the I guess is it officially called like a hiatus now or like what would they officially call this? Just a pause? Or? They, switched, they switched the translation to like temporary break, but it's mm. more like a switching in focus i would mm -hmm. say so it's not really a break on the group it's just a switching in focus to solo album instead of group album next i think it's a good thing because they do have solo music but it's they didn't really have time to develop a full album some of them have but not all and it's really hard to do that when you have to also create music for the group mm -hmm. while creating your own music while doing group promotions and all that so the fact that they're still keeping group promotions, still doing like group things like run BTS while they just get to switch their music focus onto solo um, album. I think that's great. I think it'll give them each member like more of a presence, more of a color. And I know ARMY is very excited to see like what each member produces too. And then I trust them when they say they're going to come back as, as a group because they have done like everything yeah. to tell us that and so yeah now we just trust them <laughs> right yeah and they're still doing like a group concert in october for the oh. world expo so oh, that's something too it's like news to yeah. me right now breaking news <laughs> that's gonna be awesome so is it like a full-on concert do you think it's gonna be something closer to like an mma performance or like a what are, your, what are your thoughts well in the articles it says like bigger than pdt la bigger than any concert they put on before um but i don't know exactly what that <laughs> what that entails and they haven't announced a date for it either yeah. but i really want to try and go <laughs> they had like horses in 2019 mma they had like i don't know what they're gonna do to top that performance for me like even as like just a metal fan that's the best live show i've ever seen in my life just yeah. world that is the concert not concert that's the performance i watched like every night at like 4 a.m <laughs> in london <laughs> just re-watching that that performance over and over it's so good it's so ridiculous i can't even i whenever they start bringing out horses i was like of course of course they did this it's like so much it's i i don't know it was perfect though like that for me i think it's probably the best live show i've ever seen but that's cool i wonder what they're gonna do to top that hmm. but that's their plans though they're like this is the biggest biggest concert ever um that's what the article say <laughs> <laughs> it is it's for um to like announce that busan wants the bid for the world expo mm -hmm. so i guess that's why it's such like a gonna be such a big oh, thing yeah. you've been talking about on your twitter a little bit about um like a possibly a new project is there a new a new thing that might be in the works it's not necessarily a new project i'm actually very behind on it i think <laughs> but so 
the way we got to go to PDT Vegas, mm-hmm. um, me and Jeff, my boss. Also, that's something I want to clear up too. <laughs> Some people get confused on like my relationship to Jeff. Mm-hmm. Like I see sometimes like Taylor, his wife, Taylor, his <laughs> girlfriend, Taylor, his daughter. I'm not any of those. I'm just his employee. He's my boss. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's official now. So, we officially know. We got the word, ladies yeah. and gents. <laughs> The way we got to go was like two weeks before PDT Vegas was a viewer emailed me saying, I have two tickets that I want to give you and Jeff for free to go to Vegas. And so Jeff wanted to go, but because he was so like inspired by the support that ARMY gives and like ARMY in general, BTS in general, Mm -hmm. his instinct, I think, is to like make a film about it Yeah, because as a filmmaker, like that's... The first thing he wants to do, make a film about something that he's interested in. So we went there for the concert, but to yeah. also film for a documentary. Oh, that's cool. So we had put up a form in some ARMY's email saying like they want to meet and do an interview. So we filmed a bunch of interviews with some incredible armies there. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm trying to edit together now. Um, so cool. We also put out a form like for people that weren't in Vegas that could just send in like video um, submissions. Mm -hmm. So they will be added as well right now. To me, it's in rough shape right now, not because of like the stories, the stories are great, but just like editing wise. Yeah. It's messy. Jeff thinks it's good though. I think it's just me that thinks my own work is messy. (laughs) Um, But yeah, you can look forward to it, I guess. Yes. And I will try to make it as best as I can. Um, Jeff will help. Jeff has been guiding me, like telling yeah. me to change the parts that could work better this way. And so we're trying to like work together to make the best version possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I've got a couple of like film editing nerdy questions because like I edit all of my stuff. Um, do you use like Final Cut? What do you What do you use to edit? So I went to school for Creative Media, and in school they taught us that Adobe Premiere Pro will be the standard you will always have to use adobe premiere pro (laughs) and so i learned adobe premiere pro and then when i got this internship at oregon entertainment all of his work is done with final cut pro (laughs) which is not a problem because before school i could not afford um adobe so Mm -hmm. i had used final cut for many years before that and it's actually way easier to me um so yeah we use final cut for everything but i do know how to use premiere pro and mm-hmm. adobe after effects oh yeah yeah nice. but my my editing skill level is very like basic <laughs> like I, it's very like introductory level i think uh, i think so. some people would disagree with you you're like <laughs> your intro video looks beautiful did you do that all in final cut is that what you did that in yeah i did that in final <sighs> cut it's so cool to me to see like Something like that. It's equivalent to like if a really good guitarist came in here, like a really famous, awesome guitarist came in here and like picked up this guitar and then just like shredded and just played something amazing on that guitar. It's like it's doable through what you've got. You know what I mean? In a way, I don't know. So that's really cool to know that that's what you use because that's all I edit on is Final Cut Pro. I love it. It's or X, I guess. Yeah, is it X? Is that one? Yeah, yeah, Final Cut Pro. I'm like a hotkeys person, so like I'm like a blade and all or whatever. Like I just I just go through and hotkeys cut everything, and then I'm like, okay, what do we got? But, but uh, yeah, this project was really big and basically crashed my computer. Oh my gosh! Final stages, so I did have to get an iMac, which <laughs> I have now. <laughs> so this project may have been the downfall of my computer, but still, I am <laughs> grateful that it made it through. Yeah. Wait. No. Uh. The intro was like it crashed your computer, or the one that you're working on now. Uh the intro. Um. Because the documentary is technically under Oregon Entertainment, which mm-hmm. is like uh, work technically. Yeah. Uh. But the intro was like my personal project, so mm-hmm. I was doing it on like my 2018 MacBook Pro. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it was like it would sound like it was on fire. Like <laughs> <laughs> I did not sound like it. Was, it sounded like it was like a plane, like, just like getting ready to take off, yeah. like the fan just going at its hardest and <laughs> just freeze up every time I tried to like edit anything in the project mm-hmm. so that's why I had to get an iMac there you go hey there's always I mean it's always a good reason to uh to get a new computer I'm like that I don't know that's what I ended up getting uh I stream a lot so I was looking for different computers and playing music I like was looking for something to do with logic is what I record through and so everybody in my band was like you have to get it back so I ended up going with an iMac as well too it's like a little I think it's 27 inch iMac 
think is what I got. But that's awesome, though. And then, so the new uh, video that you're working on right now for ARMY, is it like a story about ARMY? Or is it like, how would you describe what it is, if you can tell us about it? It's more like how BTS has impacted ARMY's lives. That's how I would sum it up. It contains a lot of different people. There's a lot of diversity Mm -hmm. um, in age. And we have like male fans. We have fans with disability or like um, health problem. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like spoil, but (laughs) yeah. But there's a lot of diversity in the types of armies we feature and we just want to that's another message we want to send that army's not only 13 year old girls yes. it's guys it's older people it's all kinds of people mm-hmm. so it's basically just them tell saying how bts has impacted their lives mm-hmm. That's the whole idea behind this podcast, by the way, is like there's so many different people that are fans of BTS and like, I don't know, I think whenever I heard the, there was, I guess they were getting made fun of or something like that, like somebody, like a host of a show or something was saying that all their fans are just teenage girls or something. Whenever I heard that, I was like, man, I have seen, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some, like there's, I'm sure there's a lot of teenage girls. My daughter's about to be a teenager, so like she's going to be a teenage girl fan and she'll definitely be screaming at their concert if we get to go. But everybody I've met in the comments, all the reactors that I've talked to, everybody I've met not fitting that stereotype. It's just completely different and I like that. That's awesome that that's what your video is going to be showing a lot of too. Very mm-hmm. cool. So, but that's going to be something featured on um, your works YouTube and not necessarily like your personal YouTube account. Is that what I was getting? Yeah. So it'll be on org entertainment, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Yeah. Because it's like Jeff is directing. Mm-hmm. I'm just helping like put it together. So yeah, it's a work project. Mm-hmm. So it won't be on Taylor channel, be on org entertainment channel. Yeah. I can't wait to see that though and like honestly I just admire your editing and then also I'm really excited to see how these interviews go and were most of these like so all these were like before the concert these were filmed a day or two after the concert I bet that was insane like their energy had to be just like infectious at that point it was a bit of it was like bittersweet because they're sad because a lot of them were leaving that day like yeah. leaving the area they're from out of state or whatever so it was like happy because they were like oh i got this amazing experience but at the same time they were leaving so yeah. <laughs> the day or two after the first set of concerts so mm-hmm. actually there was the next two concerts the week after there you go some people were saying until that next concert, including me. Uh, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which was like a last minute decision. Yeah. So did you but, guys yeah. stick through like the entire thing, like the whole set? Or did you, I'm trying to think, I saw the video that you posted on your channel, but was it, did y'all miss like the first day or? We went to the second night uh, concert. So Jeff flew, yeah, Jeff flew in the day, basically the time the first concert was starting. Mm-hmm. So we like walked outside of the stadium but we never got to see like the concert itself Mm -hmm. we just went to like the merch booth since there was like no line while the concert was going on and then yeah the second night we went to and then jeff left a few days after that Mm -hmm. and i was supposed to leave supposed to leave a few days after that with him (laughs) but i was like actually like if you watched the org entertainment video vlog Mm -hmm. the part where I'm kind of like sitting after the concert and just like talking nonsense. Um, but for some reason, lots of armies like clip that and put it on Twitter and like oh, related to it. Yeah. But anyways, that part, I think after he turned off the camera, I was like, what do I do with my life now? <laughs> I was like so sad. Like the PCB was really hitting. Yeah. Oh God. And then I was like, oh, I wish I could stay until the next concerts. And then he's like, well, if he can stay, then go for it Aww. and i'm like really <laughs> <laughs> and so like that moment i was like okay i'm gonna try everything i can to like stay here for the next week yes yeah. yeah there's very few moments where like a boss would let you just stay like yeah. that oh, um so cool. yeah do you like, was, like the best moment ever <laughs> how would you describe the concert and like that whole experience how would you describe that i was thinking about this during PDT Vegas, they have a song called Whalian 52. Uh, have you listened to that one yet? Not yet, but I'm excited. I, I might spoil. <laughs> no, you got it. You go for it. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's about a whale who has a 52 hertz frequency, which is different from all the other whale, whales. 
It's about a real whale, actually. Mm-hmm. And, and it's nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world. And it kind of just, or the scientists is that, that it's just like roaming around the ocean, looking, like calling out and looking for someone who would understand it. Mm-hmm. So the song is basically about how the youth sometimes feel like that, where they're like saying things, they're trying to express things, but no one understands, mm-hmm. like um, parents or whoever it be doesn't understand. And I think, and like armies really connect to that story and like see themselves, including me as like the purple whale mm-hmm. or like whaling 52. But I thought about it while I was at the concert and I was like, I think this is a place where like William 52 can be heard because if you sit in the BTS concert, it is so loud. Like yeah. the crowd, is, <laughs> like yeah. Jeff even said, the energy is like so amazing. Like the, just the cheers that there were even before the concert started mm-hmm. was um, so overwhelming. Yeah. I was thinking like, this is the place where all the whale, the 52 Hertz whales finally came. And this is a place where they can all be heard like, as loud as possible yeah so that's how i feel that it is because i don't know i think i said this in the vlog while i was like spewing off random things but (laughs) like i didn't know anyone in that stadium Mm -hmm. but it felt like i knew them yeah because they know something about me that no one else really does yeah they like understand so i think that's really what the concert is about and on top of that like you get to see them like with your own eyes yeah feel and like it's a place where we can like thank them mm-hmm. whether it just be through like random s- y- screaming <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a way of thanking them because they yeah. like the scream where we can thank them for like everything that they helped um in our lives with that is so, yeah. so cool like i'm a really big fan of going to concerts like i love going to concerts and i've always thought that the live show is just a different energy but the way that you said that is completely i think that's the best way i've ever heard a concert described and i think bts even because going to metal shows you go to a show and i don't really like i'm not like goth metal by any means you know like i go to a concert just wearing this so like always cool because in in a metal concert it's kind of in the same way like you know metal's kind of fringe so you go to a concert and everybody there is like into the same random obscured band that you're into you know and it's like it's really cool but like bts i'd imagine he's even it's probably that just amplified so much more because there's so many more people. And then you realize that like, you know, for me and probably for you until you started converting some of your real life friends into BTS army, like you didn't have anybody else that you could talk to about it. And then all of a sudden you're in a sea of all these people that are like just super into the same thing you are. That's really cool. One day, I really hope to see them live one day. That's like on my list. Ah. Yes, you have to. (laughs) <laughs> was, was that your first uh, BTS concert? Uh, I went to PDT LA. Mm-hmm. So it's the same set list almost, but different location. And the vibe felt totally different in Vegas too. Oh, you got to go to Vegas like, as well? So you went to LA and then I think was the, the vlog in LA or was that for Vegas? Vlog was Vegas, okay. but I did go to PDT LA before that. Vegas was like completely different? Yeah, the vibe just felt, I don't know if it was because the Las Vegas Strip, like everyone was staying on the Las Vegas Strip. Mm-hmm. And so like everywhere you walk, you'd see like automatically, if I was walking down the street, I'd look for people with a clear stadium bag. Yeah. With, And if you look closer, you'll see the BT-21 keychains hanging <laughs> off. And so that's how you know that someone else is army. Mm-hmm. And then like on top of that, they had Hyde put on their own events. There's also like cup sleeve events by armies. Oh, there were cool. um, like the hotels even had the special BTS rooms or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like the whole atmosphere was just like BTS. And even the Uber drivers were playing BTS in the car. Yeah. I just felt like the whole city had been turned into BTS city. <laughs> yeah. Was that one of their first? Um, well, I think LA. LA was the first one <laughs> since the pandemic. Was that the first one? <laughs> I bet yeah. like that was completely different as well too. Just like thinking of, because for me, I didn't know that we were going to be able to have concerts at that magnitude anymore after after the pandemic. You know, so that had to be like a, just a really, I don't know, starting a new kind of feel to it in a sense. Maybe you know. I think they were both both good in their own ways. Because yeah, yeah PDCLA was really special because like the first time Army got to see them and they got to see Army in person again. Mm-hmm. So that had its own, like, charm as well. Yeah. 
Man, Vegas though, that sounds awesome. And uh, one of my friends actually went to uh, Lollapalooza or uh, Hobie Palooza, and um, yeah, and like I don't know, she said that uh, Army were everywhere, just like handing out really cool little cards and like keychains and stuff like that. And she's got like just pictures upon pictures of free stuff that they were handing out, and like that's something I think that's really unique to Army and to BTS. I don't think that like you know, in no concert I've ever been to, they've like people make stuff and just like give awesome cool souvenirs out at the show it's really cool yeah in, in vegas i actually came back with like a whole bag full of like free sheets <laughs> and I, I made them as well i actually have like one conveniently like right here <laughs> left from one that i didn't give away so it was like just these little packs with like oh, <laughs> that's awesome There's some like stickers in here that is so cool yeah. oh my gosh well so i think was that j-hope is that who that card was yeah, I had like some of all the members that don't stay home. So, who is your bias? Do you have a bias? No, I I really cannot choose because <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, it's Jungkook, and then I watch a video of Jimin, and I'm like, oh, it's Jimin, and then yeah. I go watch a video, I'm like, oh, it's Jay Ho now. Yeah. And so what I always say is like my bias is whoever I'm looking at in that second. Oh, because go. it changes like <laughs> it changes based on whatever I'm watching. So yeah, there's no bias for me, and like even it's really bad for my bank account because when I buy something, <laughs> I have to buy all seven, or else I'll feel bad. Oh, like some people that have a bias, they'll only buy their biases like the twenty one character or their photo card or whatever. But then I, I'm like, no, I have, I can't leave anyone <laughs> out. I have to buy them all. And so that's really bad for my bank account, but that's how it's got to go. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny because that's how I am with my children. I've got two daughters and I'm like, if I get her something, I have to get her something. I can't like just bring her home nothing, you know, like, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> but I was actually talking about that in my last, um, in my last reaction, like, Every time that I watch a new BTS song, we're going through like solos right now, and um, I watched a sugar one, and I was like, man, like right before that was uh, was Jimin, and then before that was JK and RM, and I'm like, every video, I'm like, man, that was really cool. He's kind of like, might be my bias. I don't know. But then like, I think for me, like I relate a lot to Jin. I love Jin. Freaking awesome. Dude, I love all of his solo stuff, but like... The more I go about it, I think the more that I'm kind of close to that OT7, I think is what they call it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. getting a lot closer, to, I think just, just accepting that and maybe that I don't have a bias to 100%, I just, which is probably going to aggravate some people that are watching this. They're going to be like, no, you're a gen bias. But like, ah, there's so many, they're like, they're all so relatable and in their own different, unique, cool ways, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's something in each member that you can relate to and that's, it's hard to choose one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's what makes BTS so, like, I think that's a lot of their success is that they are so relatable while at the same time, like, you know, I don't know. I imagine seeing them in concert is just like an awestruck experience, you know, like just actually seeing them in person. You're probably like, what? It's cool that they're so relatable as well, too. And it's an oddity that, that people are like that, you know, or it's celebrity are like that, I guess. And then mm -hmm. so open like V Live, they do so much on those things. They connect to their to their fans so much. We actually have a couple of fan questions for you if you're down. Yeah, I'm down. Is it weird to hear that you've got fans fan questions? Because you've got some. You've got a lot actually. <laughs> Even when you ask me the first, I don't know if people know this, but this I'm here after the second time you've asked me. <laughs> um, but from the first time, I was like why do people want me on this? I was like, I made only one video. Like, I'm not by any means a famous army or anything. So I'm like, why do they even want me here? But I'm like, okay, I'll just go. And if one person watches, yes. that'll make me happy. So. No, there you go. Like, <laughs> seriously, the first time that I asked, I was like, well, I'm just going to put my feelers out. And I was like, I don't know. I had no clue. But the second time I felt like I hesitated before I asked you because I didn't want to be like, come off as like pushy or anything like that or like try to be intrusive or anything. But I was like, I just because you've got like a great personality and I see like I said like a lot of myself in you and you're you're like you know I'm not really 100% comfortable on camera and stuff and like I think that you've got something you've got like you're a great editor and then your vlogs I cannot wait to see that I really hope that you do that I think that'd be so cool and I know a lot of people do too so 
But yes, you've got a lot of fans and they've got a lot of questions for you. First fan question that we've got is from I am Jimin. All the purple is their name. Why in the end did you decide on your video uh, subtitles over narration? For one, the simple answer is I don't like my voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was uh, an intern at Org Entertainment who volunteered to help me with um, the narration if I wanted it. Mm -hmm. But I took so long editing it that by the time... I was like ready. I could have been ready for it. She had already like moved on to another job. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was either like me doing it myself or some people even volunteered to do it for me. But then I was like editing wise, it also mm. doesn't work because while you're reading the songs playing in the background oh, yeah. and if there was narration over it, I would have to make the song really soft when it's the, really the song that I want them to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so editing wise, it would just make it a whole lot messier yeah and i could like extend the song so that the song keeps playing after the narration and then it make the video two times longer mm -hmm. it was like a whole mess of things to me like hearing a stranger's voice during this introduction may have made it feel like like taking you out of it mm -hmm. for some reason so yeah i think subtitles worked and also i think it was easier for people that wanted to add subtitles mm -hmm. Because they could like see exactly what I wrote and then automatically just like translate it to their own language after. Yeah. Um, also, like, thank you to everyone that wanted to subtitle it. That's amazing. That's cool. Honestly, I mean, in retrospect, and especially after what you just said uh, with the conflict with the music, I think the music was one thing that really captured me. That first song that you played, um, the strings version of, I'm trying to think what the song was. The intro song? Mm -hmm. uh, it was on beautiful that was such a great <laughs> choice because like i hadn't heard it we're just working our way through the discography like that part in the video i was like this is going to be epic it's such a great intro song <laughs> to an introduction to bts very well done i'm glad that you didn't choose to have someone else do the narration over it for sure but like since you decided not to do the narration i really 100 percent agree with like i think that the way that you did it it worked very well it was like perfect so thank you thank you for answering that question i know that there's like i guess some conflict over it or like a little bit of a discussion about it like if you were going to do it the narration or the the subtitles but yeah it worked perfectly thank you yes this one's from that girl meg uh, what was the process of filming your intro? And then in that process, what was your favorite and least favorite part of making that? My favorite part in the video is definitely either the intro or Suga's intro. <laughs> Just that part yeah. where like he lifts his hat with the <laughs> song in the background. Yeah. Oh, wow. It just looks so epic. Yeah. Um, and then also the army part at the end. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know. I haven't watched every single other intro that there is out there, but I think I was the first to include ARMY mm -hmm. in the intro. So I think that's one of my favorite parts because I think ARMY should be included. Uh, least favorite part, there are some editing mistakes. I know people probably can't see it, <laughs> but I can. And so every time I watch it, like, oh, I won't tell you where it is because people are going to look down right now, but yeah. there are some little, very little mistakes that I wish I could change. But I'm not going to re-upload the whole thing just for that. Yeah. I love, like, the perfectionist in you. Like, I, I <laughs> see that so much. And just recently, I've gotten to the point. I did, like, a vocal take recently. And it was over the weekend. And it's the first time ever that I've just been, like, patted myself on the back, kind of. Not, like, in an arrogant way by any means. But I was just, like... That was good. And that's the first time. I've been, like, a singer since for at least, like, 10, 15 years. And that's the first time that I've ever just been like, yeah, that was good. I like that. First time. I want to get to that point. Yeah. I want to be able to do that when I make something too. Yes. Well, anybody that's watching this video right now, please tell her that she's awesome. <laughs> like, comments are just going to be like, Taylor, you're so cool. So yeah, you totally got this. Well, there you go. And then like the process of it, how did you choose what clips to put in and like, did you storyboard the whole thing? So actually finding the content, the clips to put inside was the most difficult part because I have maybe four minutes to put everything that a member is into like four yeah, minutes. Yeah. I have the right clips, put the right information. So like 
something as simple as Jimin is cute. I know Jimin is cute. Army knows Jimin is cute. <laughs> but the person who's watching this might have never seen Jimin before. Mm. And so I have to choose like five seconds that'll show a person that Jimin is really cute. <laughs> and I can see in my head, like the clip, like, uh, I know this clip, he's making this cute face, he's wearing a white shirt or whatever. But then I'm like, okay, what was that video called? Then what do I search to find that video? And then I find the video and I'm like, oh, this is not a good quality. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta go search for the HD version. <laughs> and it just takes like 10 minutes to find something that's going to be in the video for two seconds. So that's how it went. And like finding the right clips to the army would agree is a good representation of the information given mm. was really hard. And so that's why I did so many polls on Twitter. I did maybe like one poll on YouTube, but most on Twitter. And then I got like thousands of comments from the draft version. Yeah. And so army helped me like find the right clips because I'm like, I can explain the clip, but I just can't remember the name. And so yeah. they would try and look it up for me. Oh, that's so, cool. so with that, it felt like a team effort because people helped me find content. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't even remember what the original question was. Sorry, but I just no. kept on. <laughs> no, it's awesome. I, I love the idea that like this is a a film definitely made by Army, like your your Army. But then on top of that, you it's like a collection of just awesome different members of Army coming together and like you getting that support is so cool. I think that's how a lot of us go down the rabbit hole. It's like our friend or something like that is like, oh hey, check this out, check this out. And it's neat to see that this video kind of is like a culmination of like just a, you're kind of steering the ship and then you're like hey guys what can we put here or like you know i'm thinking of this how help me out and then everybody's just kind of like it was takes a village type thing you know i think that makes me like the intro even more now knowing that it's such a good representation of army even from the making of it and i also did that because like there are certain things i like about the members the most like in my opinion mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily like the most important thing about them mm -hmm. and so i didn't want my opinion or like my favorite parts to unintentionally be the focus in the video yeah. if it's not really the focus in his like not necessarily the thing that would stand out most in his introduction so mm -hmm. i wanted to like double check with army that my feelings weren't like too involved in mm -hmm. the introduction so they helped me fix some of those parts because in the draft there was some of those parts <laughs> where it was my yeah. my feelings that were showed in the video rather than what it really is it's supposed to be. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. I don't feel like there was too many parts where I was like, she seems really biased to this or something like that. Yeah. Last fan question, because we actually answered some of the fan questions in the original part of the uh, conversation. But about how long did it take you to actually from <clears throat> like the idea to completion of your intro video? I think I really started in December mm -hmm. and then I finished the draft version in about a month and people may not want to hear my excuse but i think it's a good excuse. in the draft version i also acknowledged that jim and v's part were very rushed and i got lots of lots of comments <laughs> about that and i know it was but the reason i had to rush at the end not only because of like editing burnout and like my computer mm -hmm. crashing but my coworker that I intentionally made this for was moving states and I really wanted to show her in person. Yeah. And so the person I'm talking about is Olive. If you watch Oregon Entertainment, you'll know her. But the day we filmed her reaction is actually like one or two days before she actually had to move. Yeah. And so I really rushed that part, which is why I finished it in a month. Like I stayed up oh my gosh. until I really couldn't yeah. keep my eyes open anymore to <laughs> keep editing this. And then the editing of it put it off for like two and a half months maybe <laughs> because after the draft version i got like thousands of comments on every single video because there was all his reaction video jess reaction video and then i posted the draft separately mm -hmm. and so i'm getting thousands of comments from all three of those videos yeah. plus people were DMing me people were emailing me mm -hmm. and i was just like oh my god like <laughs> there's so much stuff i have to change and like so much feedback that I have to go through. And so I got like overwhelmed and I didn't want to work on it for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I think in April and May, I really started um, working on the edits more. So maybe editing took about one month mm -hmm. because I really wanted to finish it before their proof comeback. So yeah, I would say draft a month 
and then editing another month. And I, as everyone knows, I edit for like my day job too. And so coming home and then having to edit some more, I was just like getting editing burnout. Yeah. But I think it was all like worth it. <laughs> for real. Yeah. And I couldn't even imagine like just even editing my reactions and stuff or even like editing the podcast. It just, I'm sitting in front of this computer for a long time. So like if that's your day job and then you're coming home and it's like also your passion project, that's very admirable for you to keep it all. And and then also organizing all that. Like you said, I mean, like I get a lot of DMs and I get a lot of comments and all that stuff being able to organize all that for this video that's like a huge on taking in itself i don't know how you did all that by yourself that's like that's awesome that's huge well after the draft there's actually armies that reached out to me like hey mm. i'm good at like organizing i can help you make a spreadsheet of what? the comment and so i had one person who was organizing all the subtitles and she's still doing a great job of that now because there's still people asking yeah. for like subtitles and another um, army who was helping me make a spreadsheet and it was like broken up by every member. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she like put in paraphrase versions of the feedback. So I could just like read them quickly and like go through if I want to change it or not and like the pros and cons of changing it. So yeah, I didn't do it all by myself. There were <laughs> armies that volunteered to help. That so is... I'm really grateful for them. I think that might be one big reason I think too that like this is such a huge thing for ARMY is because like you really embodied BTS and ARMY in this one video and it's just it's cool to see that like like I said I feel like you kind of you're the captain of this ship kind of and you had so many awesome people just like helping push it along as well it's really cool I like that a lot we we made it through the questions we've officially done it we had a whole page of questions now they're done we did it do you have any words for like our viewers and for the people that have watched your videos and the fans of your video yeah i guess just thank you for suggesting my video to reactors and for anyone who like helped me vote on the polls who left nice comment and not nice comments but like constructive criticism mm -hmm. on all my drafts and stuff and like support because really like i know you posted about this a few days ago or something mm -hmm. that even in a sea of nice comments, the one bad one will oh stick gosh. out. Yes. And so definitely I got bad ones from, from the draft version. And even on the final version, I mm -hmm. get some bad ones still. But because of all like the other comments that are like positive, like, oh, this is great. This is the best intro I watched. Or like, thank you for making this. Yeah. It cancels out, you know? Yeah. And so anyone who has left a nice comment on any of my videos thank you because oh, it matters yeah. and even though i don't reply to all the comments i do read them all mm -hmm. even if you think i didn't read it i probably did read it <laughs> yeah. i just don't have the time to respond to every single one but i'm grateful anyways and i hope you look forward to any other content i put out i guess <laughs> i don't know if i will but yeah i'll try no. yeah well i know they definitely will like seriously i can't remember if it was on <laughs> on a live reaction i think it was on a live reaction that we did recently and i was like this is before I, whenever we first started doing the the bts podcast whenever this first came about i was like i really want to get taylor on just because like i love the video i just i don't know and then i just like i said i kind of whenever you said you weren't really sure about like being on camera and stuff it just resonated with me a lot because i feel the same way about myself but like you have like no reason to feel that way about yourself you know you're you're awesome you've done great in this podcast you know you like carry yourself well so during that live reaction i was like can't remember what i said but it was something along the lines of i think i'm gonna ask taylor everybody there was like i hope you get taylor on and everybody there was like saying nothing but great about you so well thank you to all these people actually your message your second message was kind of like fate or something because uh -huh. that it was right after J-Hope's uh, Lola performance mm -hmm. and he had done the V Live and was talking about how stressed he was and how nervous he was thinking that he might not be able to pull it off by himself. But of course he did amazing. And then Jin also, I think that night or like the next night said he's, he was nervous on Weverse to go to a movie premiere and he's been going to movie premieres, even though he's like very introverted and shy usually mm -hmm. in front of big crowds of people he doesn't know. Yeah. So I was like, they're both at a point where they're trying new things to like help them grow. And I should do that as well. And then that night you messaged me again. <laughs> like, do you want to yes. on the podcast? I was like, okay, well, I just thought about it. I said it to <laughs> myself, so I'm going to say yes. 
Yes. So that's how I'm here today. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying BTS is out here like affecting people and I love it so much. Like, ah. That is awesome. Well, for real, thank you so much. And I personally cannot wait to see, hopefully, hopefully you do these these vlogs. I would love to see some of the places, especially like that Bon Voyage. That is so cool. I've got to watch them. I've got to watch them soon. Yeah, you've got a lot of content to catch up. <laughs> I know. There's like 200 plus songs. I'm like not even a fraction of the way through. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Well, good luck on your journey. I know <laughs> ARMY will support you. So... Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's got it, guys. Thank y'all so much for watching this video with me. Again, please go hit the subscribe button on Taylor's channel. It's going to be below in the description. She was a freaking awesome person, and I cannot wait to see what she comes out with next. This project that she's got working on with her company for army sounds like it's going to be amazing so please guys check out that channel as well too if you guys haven't already i'll try to post a link in the description below as well for that but yeah y'all have a blessed rest of your day and i will catch y'all next time freaking tools <laughs>